Hello and welcome to About Last Night, the show that brings you all of the action from the Paris 2024 Olympic Games in that swimming pool. Last night was an epic night of racing, like they all have been. It was a star-studded night, not only in the pool, but in the building as well. We had French President Macron, we had Pharrell Williams, Andy Murray. It was amazing, Infantino, everyone was there. Uh, I hope you were watching it, because it was a lot of fun. Joining me once again tonight to recap all of the action is of course the amazing Bailey Jackson and two guests that I'm very excited to have here because they're both experts in that 50 meter freestyle um, and that was racing last night. We've got Tony Irvin and Olympic bronze medalist Bruno Frattis. Welcome to the show guys, pleasure to have you both. So let's dive in. The men's 50 meter freestyle, what a way to start the night. Bruno, what were your thoughts on the race? It was a tough one, right? There was not a clear winner until we actually got to see the times and the, the positions on the scoreboard. And I was really glad to see Flo Hamanadu getting a medal on mm -hmm. this one. I was, I gotta confess, I was rooting for him to win the whole thing. It would have been amazing to see like the whole crowd just chanting his name before before the race and he was clapping <laughs> with everybody. What a show, man. Yeah, he is. What a show, man. It was beautiful. And also, I mean, uh, Josh Leando, he was not even supposed to race. But uh, Maxim Grusset. With Maxim Grusset, exactly. Focusing on the 100 fly that put Josh Leando in the run and he finished up in, in fourth. Could you believe the story that could have been if he's Nick on the podium? I know, it was this close. But that's the thing, right, with a 50. And this is what I wanted to get your opinions on, you know. What does it take to put together the perfect 50 when it counts. You make the most with the time you have and you're just iterating, making little improvements from one effort to the next until there's only one left. And then you just gotta trust yourself and the process and everything you put together and just put it all on the line. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to, to an Olympic final, everybody there is in shape, everybody's experienced, everybody's strong and fast. It comes down to a mental game and I, I don't know if I if I got that right, but I saw a little bit of mental warfare going on when Ben Proud decided to step on the block a little earlier than everybody, you know, and everybody seemed seemed a little lost there. Even Flo Han, he had his his foot on the block, and then he had to look back to check if everybody was already up. Yeah. So there there's a lot of mental game involved in the 50s. So it's about it's about being just just being chill and uh, focusing on your own game and focusing about crossing the pool fast as possible. And you know what I loved about it was it was like the torch isn't ready to be passed yet, right? Like we have Ben Proud's 29, we got Cam McAvoy got the gold, he's 30, Flo's 33. All those youngsters are there, but it's like, you know, the, the, the guys who have been kicking around for a while, not quite ready to pass that torch yet. I don't know, man. I know people who won medals at their 40s, mm. right? I wasn't yes. in 40. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't 40. I wasn't 40. I wasn't 40. I wasn't 40. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, but I, I mentioned, obviously, I was joking here with Anthony, but like we have, we have, I always, try to bring the example of Nicolas Santos, mm -hmm. right? Who did such an amazing job becoming world champion at, in, at an age where most of us already retire and getting well over, overweight, mm -hmm. you know? So I like to think that what Nick did is possible if you, you know how to train right, you know how to take care of yourself right, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and one, one of the things that I said, Flo, after the race was, dude, please don't retire. Yeah. It's just too exciting to watch a race. You know, and I would love to see you for a fifth Olympic Games, who knows, a fifth medal, but checking on his consistency like that, I don't think a fifth medal will be, will be something any short. No, he's definitely within his reach, I think, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. And you talk about consistency and, you know, even longevity kind of plays a role in that. You know, we're still seeing kind of the vets of swimming winning these races, but in my head you'd think that a race that this, is this short, you'd see maybe more younger guys take the podium, more younger guys replace those vets. But I want to hear your thoughts on that. Is that you, you feel like that's maybe fair to say? Do you feel like it's just kind of a toss up? I was 19 the first time mm -hmm. I won the 50 meter freestyle, but it does seem to play into those that have a little bit more um, strength and experience to really get it right. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's not impossible. So, I mean, I think just phenomenal field, top to bottom, as mm -hmm. you guys kind of covered. But really, what a way to start the night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like a gun, right? 50 meter freestyle, first event. And of course, everybody's been thinking about Cameron McAvoy, mm -hmm. right? He's been the guy yeah. showing like he's doing the new thing, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's been following, he's into it. He's really exploring the sport and the water. 
and he's teaching everybody at the same time. Mm -hmm. So all, all eyes were on him. What a way to capitalize off of all of that effort. Coming away with the gold medal, really downshifted, I thought, and like got ahead, took the lead. Because at this point, every medalist has a great start. Absolutely. Every medalist has a great start. They're going to be powerful coming up. Then it's about the swim. Yeah. I personally really love Ben Prow's relationship with the water. He has the start, but the way he feels it is so good. And he's putting in so much time and effort too, right? Mm. Always getting so close. And this time, right there, silver medal in mm. Florent. What a great thing for France. And now him, gold, silver, bronze, full set. He's got the full set. Mm. He's complete. And you know, you mentioned Ben Proud there. It was so nice to see him have that. And I know he'll be over the moon with it. You know, he's been world champion, short course, long course, European champion, Commonwealth champion. And now he's got that Olympic medal. It's like mm -hmm. the, the crowning jewel, I suppose, of his like 50 freestyle achievements. So I was really jazzed for, to sort of see him up there. And I, you know, I hope he's happy with it. But like you guys say, amazing start to the night. Uh, we then moved into the women's 200 meter backstroke. The Aussies, come on, Kaylee McEwen, I'm proud of this one. My girl, she did a double-double. Gold in 102 in Tokyo, and she's done it again. An amazing achievement, and just such a fantastic racer, I think, you know? On paper, her, Regan, they kind of go head-to-head, -head, but Kaylee gets in there, and she just gets into this zone, and she just executes. It's, it's beautiful to watch. I agree. I mean, the way she, just calm, in control, just really smooth swimming, right? Uh, maybe I'll look over, you know, Kylie Bass really jumped out to an early lead, just ripping, right? And held on as best she could and got that medal with the bronze. But McCune, just smooth, in control. And I think that's really what, was what it takes to win. And with the 200, I suppose that's like the strategy, right? Like Kylie knew Regan and Kaylee were gonna come back strong, so she's going out hard. So, you know, if you're racing like a 200, Bruno, I'll bring you into this, like how important is putting those strategies together in a race, knowing how your competitors are gonna, are gonna attack theirs? Actually, any race, you, ha you have to know the right time to attack and you have to know not, not only the, the race strategy your opponent is using, but also how their mental game, again, I'll have to mention that, how the mental game works when, when it matters the most. For me, it comes down to the rivalry. I think I love watching rivalries, especially in our sport, and I think we need more of that. Mm -hmm. And to watch not only the race, but watch their reactions before the race, after the race, dealing with the results, they're looking at the big screen. So. It's, uh, I, this is one I've been loving to watch since Tokyo and I, I had a blast once again. Yeah, it was an amazing one. And then of course, you, you talk about that show, we finished with a bang. Leon Marchand, come on, the showman, the local hero, fourth gold, fourth Olympic record, that men's 2IM. What a way to sort of finish off the finals last night. Leon Marchand by now just feels like he owns the whole pool. Right? Yeah, it feels like <laughs> it, does. It, it, it just feels like it's his backyard, it's his show, and we're all just witnessing, right? And, yeah. uh, and it's one of the most beautiful moments every day when he gets to win a gold medal and uh, they play the French national anthem and everybody's just screaming his name and singing the whole thing and it's just beautiful to be there present in that atmosphere is, is definitely something inspiring. We often have the, this, this debate with, of um, which is better, right? Mm. Had to have talent or hard work, which beats the other one. And I think that, that when you have someone like Leon Marchand and obviously when you have someone like Michael Phelps, let's put it that way, it's, it's when hard work meets talent, you know, and then you're just impeccable in everything you do. And then you have a great coach, you have a great system, you have a great facility, you have a great support from your National Olympic Committee and everything comes together and you have results like this. Yeah, it's been really beautiful to watch. I mean, I've loved every minute of it. And like you mentioned, that crowd, that electricity, I think is sort of, pushing him on as well. You know, you were talking about that roar every time he comes up, every time he comes up. And I'll tell you, man, it's hard to perform in the home Olympic Games. I had the experience back in Rio 2016. And at the same time, that is such a beautiful thing to watch your home crowd rooting for you and screaming your name. You almost get caught in just looking around, you know, and just witnessing and, witnessing and being present in a moment and you almost forgot how to race. You almost forgot the main reason you're there. Out of the sudden you become an spectator and a witness to your own race mm. and then you have to switch back on again really quick. So it's, uh, it's really hard to perform under this circumstance. And you talk about switching back on. How do you mentally get past that? Like what's your process for that? Uh, for me, it's to make it a daily thing, you know. Uh, when I'm training, I like to sim simulate uh, high-pressure environments, you know, even if I have to come up with situations, like imaginary situations in my mind and just, tr just try to put myself in, 
in, in that position. So I'm not get caught by surprise when I need to deal with uh, with the reality of it. Like the body knows what to do at that point, right? Like you say, the you know the hay is in the yard. It does. As it. soon as soon as they call your name at the call room, is all yeah. is all everything's in autopilot. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Look, it was a fantastic way to finish. A big shout out, of course, going out to Duncan Scott as well. I always love watching him race. I love his closing speed and his freestyle as well. Just blows my mind. He got that silver medal and then uh, Wang Shum for China. Um, he beat Carson Foster just by point one for that bronze. There was a battle for the bronze as well, you know. So I think there's some big boys in that field and I didn't know which way it was going to go. I think with the 400, I was more... Okay, this is this is where it's at. But seeing the performance, I, it was a fantastic way for me to finish that night. When that whole crowd is with there for that entire race, your own president shows up to yeah. see you win the Olympic gold. And you mentioned like there's so much going on. How do you manage that? And there's almost been like a little bit of criticism. I thought I hear it's like he doesn't seem to be reacting. And it's like well, he's got a lot to handle. He's and, locked in, right? Yeah, he's locked in. He's locked into the business. Like, this is what he wants to do. This is what he wants to be. And tonight, it was great to see him. He just, like, lifted his arm, and the crowd just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That double fist bump. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It was beautiful. Like you were saying, we need showmen like that, We right? do, we yes. do. We need to, I mean, it's, it's already a great sport. It's already so exciting mm. for us, you know? But having showmen like that, having icons like yeah. this help people from outside the bubble, outside the niche to get interest in swimming, you yeah. know? So, and bringing this new audience, it's, uh, it, it's been so necessary for us. We love to see it. Before we go, we're gonna look at the schedule for tonight, because guess what, we get to do it all over again. Uh, we're kicking it off with that men's 100 meter butterfly final. We then move into the women's 50 meter freestyle semis. We've got the women's 2am uh, medley final, the women's 800 freestyle final, and uh, we finished it with that mixed four by one medley relay final. So, let's start with the men's 100 fly. Who are your picks? Who should the audience be looking out for? Who's gonna be making waves in that pool? Mm, by now, I have become Team France. This this audience have just convinced me, so I'm going with Maxime. I'd love to see Maxime coming coming out on top. And once again, we have the national anthem, we have the crowd cheering, and I, I just want to be there for, for the hype of it. We'd love to see it. I'd love it. You, Tony, who's your pick? I'm picking Josh Lando, my neighbor to the north in Canada. He's been coming really close here in these finals, putting a credible effort. I think he wants to make this work tonight. All right, looking ahead to the women's 200, I am... I want to hear your hot takes. Who you have? Hot takes? Hot takes. I'm going with the obvious, Summer. Okay. Mm. Right now, I just want to see Summer shining. It's a 17-year-old. She's so yeah. talented, and uh, it's just so exciting to, to see her race, you know? And she's so lovely on her reactions to the race, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just got to... When, when you see talents like Summer McIntosh like that, um, at least from my perspective, I love to see how she races now. But I also love to imagine how many more Olympics we're going to see her breaking world records and being on top, you know. And Summer is one of those talents that I truly believe we're going to be really familiar with her name for many more Olympics to come. And then I'm going to be able to say, yeah, I saw her start, yeah. you know, and brag about it. You know what I'd be loved about Summer as well in this, just before we dive into the next race, is that her mum raced in, you know, the 84 Olympics and has been here in the races that she's racing and is here watching her race them and win golds in them. It's like such a beautiful, like, storyline. Tony, who are your picks then for the women's 2IM? Oh, I got to go with my countrymen. I got Alex and Kate in there. They're going to be side by side supporting each other. If anybody can take down Summer McIntosh, it's those two together. Love to see it. And then, of course, the women's 800 meter freestyle final. Who's it going to be, boys? What do you think, Bruno? You know my answer, dude. Katie Ledecky. Katie Ledecky. Katie Ledecky. It's, Ledecky. It's, it's, it's really the Katie Ledecky show when it comes to distance, you know, because I was taking a while just to, how do I make this interesting? But it, what the hell is Katie, dude? It's just Katie. Yeah. It does, I mean, who's winning anything over uh, a 400? It, it's Katie. <laughs> These girls are just lucky she doesn't swim any open water. It's true. Don't know she just kicks everybody's ass anyway. <laughs> Sorry for the other girls, but you know who you're racing, no, man. You, you know what you, you girls know what you sign up for. A hundred percent. And it's Katie. Good luck. And our final race, love finishing with a relay, the mixed four by 100 medley relay. The boys, the girls getting together. Sounds like a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a great way to finish the night. But who? He's gonna take the gold. When it comes to relays, I'm a Team USA mm -hmm. fan. I mean, what you guys do with the team, I don't know what it is, but there's such team culture. You know, when you put four American swimmers together, no matter what relay is, every time something special comes out of it. So I'm going with Team USA. I agree. I, I think the USA can always show up on a relay, but it's not gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. Who else is in there? 
my people. Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Team Australia. Australia. Uh, I to, yeah, yeah, if, if, I, if I'm being honest, yeah. uh, my favorite anchor of all time is going to be anchoring Australia's mm -hmm. relay. And mm -hmm. I do think when, dude, can you imagine the feeling of having Kyle Chalmers chasing you down the pool? I'll, I'll, I'll freak out. The fear. I'll, yeah. I'll just the freak fear. out. I'll just freak out. I think I'd rather have an alligator chasing me by the pool than Kyle Chalmers. I mean, it's yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's, a, that's a very fair consideration to, to this race. Yeah. Well, whoever gets it is going to be an amazing way to finish the nine. It's a lot of choices. Hey, I wouldn't go to sleep on France either. They've been swimming out of their heads. They can, really, they can really match up a mixed relay. Yeah. Choices can be made here. We don't know. We don't know who's going to be on these lineups. But anyway, that's going to be a great race as well. So loads to look forward to. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you so much for joining us as well. Stay tuned for another episode of About Last Night.